Okay, hi guys. In this video, I'm just going to answer a question which one of my students um, asked, which was he's buying an electric guitar and he was wondering what guitar to choose. So he's an acoustic guitar player, has no idea really about electric guitar, about different types, and he was looking online, I think in a buy and sell group, and there was just too many options. So it'll be quite fun just to quick video, give you tips, you know, quite beginner basic stuff. Um, we're not going to go into too much into electronics, too much into kind of the wood and stuff like that and the different sort of uh, builds and, you know, the high spec sort of things. Just what a beginner guitar player will be looking for and some few tips and tricks to help them out. So um, the first thing we're going to talk about is even before we get into a shop, even before we start looking online or jump into like a buy and sell group, having a clear idea in your head of kind of the, um, the look and the sound that you're after and also the price point, which is obviously quite important, but really look in the sound. So how you can kind of get an idea from that is looking at kind of the different artists you like. So if you like, you know, Eric Clapton, look at what guitar he plays, so Stratocaster. Uh, if you like Slash, you look at his guitar, so kind of a Gibson Les Paul, because um, you're probably going to be playing those styles of music. So you want really the instrument that can play that style of music. As I'm going to show you in a minute, there's different guitars for different styles, um, so you really want to make sure you get the right guitar uh, for that style. So what I'm going to try and do, you now you have to bear with me here because um, I'm testing out a bit of tech here as well. But if I press this button, uh, we should have a picture. Hopefully we do. <laughs> it's not just my face and me reading off the picture. But there should be a Fender Stratocaster. Now this is one of the most um, common guitars you like to see. It's one that most people think about when they think about guitars. Is that really iconic kind of Fender shape. Um, it's really well known. It's really versatile as well. It's a guitar that kind of um, can do anything really. Um, as we go through this, we're looking at different styles of music that you can use different guitars, and you'll see that this guitar is suited for quite a few different types. It's played by some of the biggest guitar players, being your Hendrix, your Claptons, your Gilmores, all the kind of the big iconic players. The real difference between this and perhaps a Les Paul, if we look at kind of construction, which I'll do kind of live when we come back to just me, it's got three single call pickups meaning that it's not quite as um, heavy and as hard sounding as perhaps a Les Paul, which has um, humbuckers, which are kind of two pickups joined together as more output. So it works really well for your country, your kind of your indie, your pop kind of styles of music. It's not so kind of overpowering. But it's really one of the, I think, the first ones people most think about when they picture a kind of a guitar is a Stratocaster. So that's really the first one to talk about. The next one we'll talk about is the Gibson Les Paul. Again, very iconic shape. They're kind of the two big ones, your Gibson Les Paul and your Fender Stratocaster, which most other companies try and copy or model. As I said before, the Gibson Les Paul is a bit different it has two humbuckers. Um, the Stratocaster has three single coil pickups, so the humbucker has more output. So this is much more suited to rock, metal, blues, those kind of styles. So think of your Slash, um, think of those kind of pliers, those kind of hard kind of rock players. A Gibson Les Paul's really suit for that style. It's used in blues as well, um, so it can be used for both styles, but it just has more output. Um, the other ones I want to quickly show you, where are we? Here we go, are these three. So an ES335, which is used a lot in jazz, indie, and blues. An interesting thing about this one, if you look at it, it has F holes, which means it's semi-hollow, so there's actually hollow body. The problem with those sort of guitars, if you whack on loads of gain and kind of distortion, it, it basically feeds back. So it's used for jazz, indie, and blues. Not very high gain styles of music, so it won't work very well for your heavy metal, basically. If you look in the closet on that, uh, we can see the Fender Telecaster. Great guitar for jazz, Indian blues, and country. So I didn't write it down really, but it's a great one for country. Really twangy, really bright sounding guitar, so great for those sort of styles. Again, you can see there's two um, pickups there, but there's single coil, so we haven't got the humbuckers in there. And the last one is an ESP, and this is more suited for the hard rock and metal kind of styles. So again, just give a big um, kind of overview of your different types of guitars. We've got five there. So Stratocaster, and the Gibson Les Paul, the real kind of iconic shapes and guitars. And in these kind of three, just niching down a little bit further into your jazz, your kind of indie blues country, which I wish I wrote because that's really a good country guitar. And then your hard rock and metal. So now, hopefully, again, we've seen pictures. If I click this button. Ooh. Oh, God. There we go. And hopefully I'm back again. Hopefully that works. You didn't see me looking at the pictures. 
we shall find out. Um, so they're really the kind of again the iconic sort of um, guitars. There's a the kind of styles you'll be using them for. So obviously, if you're playing hard rock or you want to play hard rock, you're a beginner and you're thinking, yes, I want to play hard rock. I want to play, you know. Led Zeppelin, no June Page uses a, a Gibson Les Paul, as does obviously Slash, then that's probably the guitar you're going to be going more towards. Um, if you want to be playing country, you're probably not really going to want a Gibson Les Paul. Um, again, <laughs> there's some people that do cross it over, so it's not set in stone, but you're probably more likely to go for your Strat or your Telecaster. So bear that in mind as the first thing, what sort of guitar am I going to want for the sort of style I want to play? The next thing to really talk about is, again, that's kind of pre-shop, that's what you want to be thinking about before you start looking. Um, and then when you get in the shop, it might all change. I was looking for, well, I wanted a Telecaster, but when I started playing it, I realized that actually, I don't. And I played a Strat, and that was more the style that I wanted. It was more the kind of stuff I wanted to play, and it's just so versatile, so it's a great guitar. So it might change when you start playing them, but at least you have a basic idea of what you're looking for when you get in the shop. You're not just confused by all the different shapes and different types. You kind of have a basic idea of what type fits what style. The next thing to talk about is when you actually have the guitar in your hands and what you want to be looking for. The two basic rules of picking up any guitar is tunability and playability. And this is very um, apparent in cheaper guitars that might not hold their tuning so well or might not play so well. Obviously, when you get higher, higher end guitars, you're spending quite a few hundreds. That won't be such a problem to a degree that if you're spending maybe just around a hundred just over. So playability, I mean that it's, it's nice to play. You can hold it, it sits nice in your lap, and it feels like something you're going to pick up and want to play every night, or every day, or have a feel when you practice. That's always something to bear in mind, because you want a guitar that feels awkward, maybe a bigger body guitar, like in like a, a semi-hollow or something like that. It's slightly bigger, so it might feel a bit, bit weird, it might feel a bit awkward to hold. A Gibson's going to be probably a little bit heavier um, than, than maybe a Strat. So these things to bear in mind. But just make sure it feels nice. Run your fingers along the neck, one thing you find cheap guitars are not so well filed, maybe the fret wire, so you can easily catch your things on that. So again, things to watch out for. Just make sure it feels nice. Uh, tunability, making sure it stays in tune. So tune it up and does it hold its tuning? Especially if you play a few chords, you run a few scales. Is it going to hold its tuning? Again, something that cheaper guitars are prone to not doing is holding their tune and being very nice to probably play. Um, some of the very cheaper ones. So it's things just to be aware of there. And again, holding it, seeing how it kind of feels. Once you've got that, then obviously it's checking. If it's a second-hand guitar or pre-owned, especially on a buy and sell group, which I'll probably recommend maybe second-hand, you can obviously get something um, which would normally be a higher value, maybe like an American strap, for the same sort of price you'd buy in a Mexican strap. Again, if we're talking prices, an American strap might be up to like 700 plus. You know, we can go a lot higher with obviously those hiring guitars up to the thousands. When a Mexican Strat, you can pick up for probably about four or five hundred pounds. So you could probably get an American, um, obviously cheaper, pre owned. But make sure as you're playing it that you check the electronics. You check that your pickup selector is changing the sounds, so it's changing in pickups. Make sure the pickups obviously work. Make sure the volume works. Make sure your tones work. Make sure obviously electronics work. That's going to be the main thing, obviously, for an electric versus acoustic. There's more things to double check. Make sure the input. It's secure and works, and just having a little look around, making sure everything is where it should be. So they're kind of things to start looking for when you're in the shop. So make sure you plug it in, especially if it's pre-owned, you go to someone's house, pick it up, make sure you, they let you plug it in and you give it kind of a, a test run. Make sure it does actually work. So once you've gone through all that, you kind of, you're in the shop, you're playing around, we should then kind of have the guitar we want, we should be playing it to see if it actually is the one we want. So we've gone in there thinking, I like Eric Clapton, probably going to want a strap going in there and playing a strat and then thinking yes it does feel like the one i wanted everything works you're well away you know what to do the only other thing to talk about really is price now you're looking at a kind of an eric clapton maybe signature strat you're talking a thousand plus you know mid-range kind of thousand two thousand it's quite expensive to get a signature strat so the kind of the brands you really want to be looking for maybe not a fender stratocaster maybe a squire squire is a sister company of a fender um it's made by fender but it's kind of the cheaper kind of option, if you like. It's the budget range, should we say. Now, you can pick up a nice kind of Squire for 200, between about 200, 400, and 500. So if you're going to the top end of that, you're going to get quite a nice playing instrument, but it's obviously going to be a little bit cheaper than going all the way up to the higher end kind of uh, Strats, or Fender Strat cars, I should say. You'll still get older bodies. You'll still get a nice kind of maple or rosewood neck. You'll still get good wood. You'll still get good construction, but it's going to be that little bit cheaper getting a Squire. If you're looking more at the Les Paul sort of things, you want that Gibson Les Paul, then Epiphone's going to be the thing to look for there. And again, it's just going to save a lot of money. When you look at your Gibson Les Pauls, and I did write down some prices, 
Um, you know, Gibson Les Paul's 700 plus. And, you know, again, you can get up and up and up into your 4,000 even kind of range. Um, but you look at your Epiphones, you're looking at 100 to about kind of 6, 7, 8. Again, they do go up obviously quite high, the, um, but you get kind of mid-range between four or 500 pounds. You're going to get a very good instrument, but without kind of spending the thousands. So it's a good way of saving a little bit of money, but still getting a very well-constructed guitar, looking at kind of the Epiphone. Um, then ESPs go to, you know, 200, all the way up to kind of just under about two grand if you get the vi very kind of high-end ones. So you can get a nice ESP, but not break the bank. And then your um, Gibson ES35, we'll talk about that kind of... Um, Blues kind of jazz sort of sound, really nice for rock and roll as well. Rockabilly are those kind of guitars. If you look at the Epiphone versions of that, you, again you're looking at four and five hundred. So, in answer to my student's question, which kind of led me to this whole video, um, what guitar should I look for? Um, he likes kind of blues, he likes rock, so you'd be looking probably more at the Strat. And then for his kind of price range, he'd probably want to go more of a Squire, I imagine, or kind of a high-end Squire. Again, if you can top over that 500 mark, then maybe get a Mexican Strat. And if you can hit that 7, um, 8, then you can get quite a nice kind of American Strat. Again, signature ones are going to be hitting kind of the 1,000 plus. So it's playing around and see what you'd like. But he, that's what I'd kind of recommend to him is maybe a Squire. Play it. See what it feels like and um, check that it feels nice to your fingers. So there's kind of a way to do it. Before you go in the shop, before you start browsing kind of the buy and sells and getting confused of all the different guitars and all the different prices because you don't really know the difference between an American Strat to a Mexican Strat to um, a Squire, then get that in your head first. What the difference is, what the different shapes are and what that means. So different cutaways and the different bodies and what type of style that will enable you to play. Once they're in their heads, go in a shop and then play them and see how they feel. Tunability, playability, especially in pre-owned or cheaper models. The more high-end ones won't obviously be prone to that. You can probably walk in and be quite confident that if you spend £400, they're going to play and be um, tuned quite well. And they're going to hold that. And then um, know what you're going to pay, basically. You don't go in there in your head with a budget of £300 and start trying to play um, American strats or Gibson Les Pauls, because obviously we won't be able to afford them. It's going in that realistic um, price in your head. Play it around, and then yes, there we go. And if you do start spending four, five, six hundred pounds, especially in a shop, you're going to get them so low, but they won't go too low, because they probably won't have much they can shave off it in regard to the price. So try and get them to throw in some picks, some stands, some strings and straps. Always good things that don't make that much of a profit on, so they're going to throw them in there to get that sale. So there's a little tip there to kind of get a bit of extra from your... Uh, your shopping trip and hopefully that's been useful hope that's answered the question of what guitar to get and um yeah i'll um probably do another one soon hopefully the tech works you didn't just see me talking nonsense you actually saw some pictures too so yeah hopefully that's been um, of use and yeah cheers